Hi everyone. So in this video, I want to discuss several different topics. Um, I want to discuss different books I've read and how they've made an impact on my life. Um, I've read I've read a lot of books. I mean, if you know me, you know I'm very studious and I enjoy reading a lot. Um, I've read many books by John Steinbeck, Ernest Hemingway. I've read The Grapes of Wrath, um, cover to cover. I've read Catch Twenty Two, cover to cover. Grapes of Wrath, I, took, I think that took me a couple months to read, and Catch-22, I read in a month. Um, that's something I'm proud of. But I think reading is so important. You know, it, it's like I was saying earlier. You see, when I was younger, when I was like around the age of like 10 to 14, let's say, I used to sit around and play video games a lot, you know? I would play online with friends, you know, too. I was involved in that. And, you know, one day, you know, I just, I had this wake-up call. I just said... Am I going to be doing this the rest of my life and just keep recording like hours and hours and hours of my time in front of like a TV screen and just vegetating like that? I don't want to do that. I don't want to do that with my life. I want to start reading. I want to take it, take everything seriously. I mean, not everything seriously, but I want to take education and reading seriously. And so that's what I did. I made the choice to just slam the video games down, you know, and just pick up a book and start reading. That's what I did. I have a whole bookshelf and bookcases um, all across my house. I've got one here in the den, have one in the family room, have one upstairs in my bedroom. Um, but yeah, I love reading. I think reading is so important. I've read, I, I own many books from several different authors, including Noam Chomsky, John Steinbeck, um, Ernest Hemingway of Scott Fitzgerald, uh, John Knowles. J.D. Salinger. I've read two books by J.D. Salinger, actually. I've read The Catcher in the Rye. I've read Franny and Zooey. Um, that was an interesting book. Um, I remember reading a separate piece by Ernest Hemingway. That was um, that was a tough book to read. There were parts of that book I found to be kind of, you know, depressing. But um, it, 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 is a, it is what it is. And... Um, and like I showed in an earlier video that I have economic textbooks that I have. Also, you know, forgive me if I seem, you know, like I'm not speaking up enough um, or if I'm talking a little slower than I, I should. Um, but I, I just, you know, sometimes I have a lot of thoughts going on and it's difficult to just, you know, have everything organized. Maybe I should make a list of everything and just have it all out in order and a, and a list of, of topics I'm going to discuss and maybe drink more coffee so I can speak more succinctly and, um, you know, quickly and go from topic to topic to topic. I think that would be very important. And, you know, I mean, I might have, uh, you might have seen in other videos, my father, you know, walking around, sitting down and watching TV, you know, let me tell you a little bit about my father. You see, I tried to get along with him. I, I think I get along with him well, but sometimes we're not on the same wavelength, so to speak. And that can be kind of tough. You know, like sometimes I'll be sitting in front of the computer screen and he'll be sitting watching TV. And I mean, I know that's his thing. And he just says to me, well, you know, you, I'll do my thing. You do your thing. And that's fine, I guess. Um, and my, my father's very intelligent. He's very smart. He's, he's almost retired pretty much. I mean... He, he, he's, a, he's a good man. He really is. And if it seems like that I'm at odds with him, that isn't the case. I, I, I respect my father. He's a good man. He, he's well-educated. He, he has several master's degrees um, in, in science and, and, and business and finance. And he's helped, helped me to uh, go into the field of finance and business. I've definitely learned a lot. That's why I showed you those economics textbooks before, including this one right here. But, um, oh boy. Yeah, my father worked on Wall Street for a while. He worked at Drexel, Burnham, and Lambert, and also Morgan Stanley. So he definitely has quite a background when it comes to finance. He used to tell me so many stories. I could tell you some right now if anyone knows a little bit about finance and money. My father used to tell me stories about these big time investors and like people like Ivan Bosky and and um, Michael Milken. And he, he used to say to me, yeah, well, these people were my co-workers, but they were criminals. And you know what? I was the good man, Robert. I didn't involve myself in any insider trading or crime like that. That wasn't my thing. 
And my dad did take a break from, from the stock market. I think my father is a brilliant investor um, when it comes to the logistics of, uh, of, of all that navigating uh, the, the routes of investing. He actually took a break a year before the 1987 Wall Street crash and he went back to work on Wall Street and made a lot of money during the 90s. Um, that's how we were able to sustain living in the Hamptons and, and living here in Connecticut and having other properties. But um, I really, I, I believe that success is important, you see. I mean, some people will say that I was born with a silver spoon in my mouth. Others will say that I'm privileged. And yes, I, I do have many privileges in life. First world problems, we all have them here in America. And I don't want to, you know, have anything seem like it's, um, you know, more than what it has to be. But I, I really do appreciate all the knowledge that I've acquired. And I've always wanted to give back and share that knowledge um, in some way, shape or another. But I'm not going to give away all my secrets that I know because I think that I should I should be paid to do that. Like if I'm going to give advice on investing, I should be paid and I should monetize my accounts. And those are my thoughts on those subjects, and that's just what I'm involved with. I mean, I believe in economic justice. I believe in economic responsibility. Those are two facets of the economy and, and human responsibility I believe in. I believe it should, it should work on all levels, from, from, from all levels, no matter where you are in life. And corporations too. Corporations need to follow economic uh, ways of, of responsibility responsible actions and and we need more economic justice and I'm I'm not seeing it personally I have not seen economic justice uh, to places I've traveled to in Florida and Georgia and Virginia and and even when John F Kennedy said in his speech um, in 1960 when he did the debate he said I've been to places in West Virginia where where kids have to bring part of their school lunch home to help feed their families. And I thought that, when I heard about that, I thought, wow, and that still happens today in West Virginia, and nothing has changed. So we definitely need economic justice here in America. And if it means raising taxes on the wealthy, then so be it. We have to, we can't disregard our fellow, our fellow neighbors uh, around America. And if anyone wants to, here, here's something I wanna say. If you're a Republican and you believe in tax cuts for the wealthy, then you cannot in turn believe in um, being religious in the sense of giving to the poor because that doesn't work at all. It doesn't work both ways in that sense because we're, we're enriching the poor. I mean, I'm sorry, forgive me. We're, we're, we're giving more money to the rich and we're taking away from the poor. You see, they're they're cutting uh, subsidies and, and other um, needs uh, from the poor, including health care, including um, including uh, other methods of uh, the poor getting the resources that they need, and that's that's not fair. Well, why do why do we need to keep enriching those who ha who already have the money that they need to survive for a thousand lifetimes? You know, I mean, I consider myself to be in the middle class. I mean. And I consider myself to be economically responsible and financially responsible. And I believe everyone should be that way. And also the corporations. We definitely need to make sure that corporations are economically responsible. That's important. Now, I can organize my thoughts even further, um, but I'm going to conclude this video on that note. And I believe I have nine minutes on this video, and I'll conclude it as such. Thank you for watching.